Hello everybody, this is Hop to the Hippity Hop bringing you another StarCraft 2 commentary and this is actually going to be another um, another game sent to me by one of my subscribers um, but let's just get in here, this is actually going to be um, a high platinum slash low diamond level play so um, it's a total different game than what um, I casted previously to a bronze game so it's actually good to get a good range of games and see how other people play the game, see what the game is like at a higher level. Um, so let's see here. We are going to be spotting here on Metal, not Metalopolis, Scrap Station. Um, and over here is going to be the Red Zerg Ouroboros. 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 Yes, I think that's right. <laughs> and Epimetheus. Wow, so we got two hard names to pronounce. I'm just going to go with Boros for the Zerg player and Epi um, for the Blue Terran. <clears throat> so hopefully that's fine. I hope everyone else is fine with that. Um, looks like our Boros is going to be sending in that Overlord to see what our buddy Epi is going to be doing here. Um, grabbing the Watchtower like every good scout should. Um, actually, that's actually a very good point to touch upon. Whenever you're scouting, if there's ever a Watchtower on the way there, you should always grab it. You could probably see um, some kind of proxy racks or any cheesy play your opponent is doing. You'll be able to see that, so it's always good to do that. And look here. Looks like Epi is going for a proxy barracks. And that's actually his first barracks he's putting down. <coughs> so, though this is a pretty um, pretty sneaky thing to do, I think it would have been more beneficial for him if he actually put that Rax down there and made it look like he was just going for some kind of regular build and then put his second barracks down here. Um, but it looks like Ouroboros actually moving his Overlord um, down to this place, but passing through him, he's probably going to be able to see this. I don't know, maybe. Let's take a quick look at his... Um, his screen here. Um, oh, and it's so close. If he misses this, I'm gonna squeal like a little little girl. Uh, I don't think he's going to see. Oh, he does see it. So he does see this proxy barracks. Um, so very lucky on his point. Looks like um, Epimetheus is going to see uh, this early hatch going down. If I'm if I'm not mistaken, I think that was a 14 hatch as well as a 14 pool. So it looks like Orbos is going to be going for a very um, economic zerg build very standard nothing too crazy looks like epimetheus is going to be in the gas and wow you don't see this too often looks like he's going to be going for reapers um yeah he's going to be going for reapers and just because um in that previous patch cha they changed it so he had to get a barracks he had to get a supply depot before he can get a barracks um since they made that patch a lot of people have opted to not go reapers but it looks like epimetheus is going to be going for um some reaper players so some old forgotten reaper build is coming now back alive into this game so that's going to be kind of interesting to see what kind of damage epi is going to be able to do to boros and looks like our boros reacting just a little too harshly i don't think he needed to put down this many spine crawlers maybe one in the mineral line would have been enough as well as a couple zerglings but um yeah this um is a little little overreacting which kind of is a good thing for Epimetheus, maybe that's what he was planning for um, to make his opponent overreact, maybe build too many Zerglings instead of actually saturating which kind of seems to be the case, take a quick look at the Harvester count yeah and definitely, um, as you can see, this did a lot of um, <coughs> a lot of damage without Epimetheus really having to make that much, he made one Reaper um, but he is continuing to make Reapers and he actually has another one queued up so three Reapers are going to be coming out and this could actually do a lot of damage um, Ouroboros actually not having the best spine crawler placement. You should always have, um, you should always have them in the mineral line. Um, right here and right here are probably good spots to have them. Queen is now coming out, but at this point there are already two Reapers out. I don't know if he even has Zergling speed yet, so as you can see this is messing with his macro as well. He should be getting that speed, um, but instead he's too busy worrying about um, these two Reapers. And really you shouldn't be worrying that much. Um, if anything, he should kind of Pull back maybe a couple of his drones, especially right here, moving back just a tad bit. And now it looks like Ouroboros is going to be putting that spine crawler right in the middle of that line. It's a good play on his part, but the problem is right now Ouroboros is slowly falling behind. Um, granted that Epimetheus is kind of busy busy microing his units, um, his Reapers, that he's not um, building any more harvesters, I don't think. Oh no, so he does have harvesters um, continuing to build, so Orbor is actually doing a good job here, trying to get back in the game, trying to produce more and more drones. Take a quick look at the production type, and now he is opting to get that metabolic boost. Some Zerglings just standing around here doing nothing. This queen could go down if he's not careful. Nice micro here. <coughs> oh, excuse me. This Reaper is pretty low on health. He's going to have to be careful not to lose it by moving it out of the way, out of harm's way. Nice micro here again. 
um, moving this Reaper away as the other two attack. It looks like this Queen is going to be able to defend, maybe taking out this one Reaper, and it is going to go down. But he does have two Reapers, and this Hatchery could go down, this could be very bad for our bros, putting him far behind. Um, this is looking not too good, let's see if this Hatchery actually does go down, Five it does go down, so... Wow, and that Reaper is going to be taken off by those Broodlings, but this is going to be um, very hurtful. And Epimetheus, being a good player he is, um, actually was grabbing his expansion um, during all that. So a lot of damage was done. Looks like Orbos is going to be transitioning into the one base Roach build um, that a lot of Zerg are able to do. So Zerg, they can be effective on one base as well. Um, you don't have to always have two bases. You don't have to have um, more one more base than your opponent. But... Um, if you don't attack with this Roach Warren and do some damage, you are for sure going to be falling behind. So that is the reasoning behind that. Let's see if he actually has some Larva saved up. Looks like he is still droning up. And, oh actually that was um, an Evolution Chamber building, so he does actually have a Roach Warren already up. Looks like a Reactor is being put on one of those barracks. I don't know if he's moving out. Apparently he's deciding to move back with his um, Command Center. Um, I don't know what that's all about. Oh, it looks like a starport is going to be out. Oh, pumping Vikings out. Either Vikings or Medivacs. He could be going for some kind of mass marines, mass marauders, Medivacs. Looks like two... <coughs> oh, bleh, bleh. Sorry about that. Looks like two tech labs. Excuse me, yeah. Two tech labs, some marauders and marines. Um, let's see what actually comes out of the starport. I think it's going to be Medivacs. I don't know, but it looks like Orbos here is going to be breaking down his rocks. Doesn't seem like he's too... Um, too uh, concerned about getting his expansion again. Um, so he could be falling behind if he doesn't do an attack sometime soon. Let's take a quick look at the income tab. Yeah, Epimetheus is just slightly ahead. Um, not in Harvester count, but due to his mules. It looks like he is actually opting to get this um, island expansion. So very sneaky on Ep Epi's part. Burrows here, just spreading out his creep. Um, I think he could have actually spread out creep just a bit sooner. Unfortunately, he didn't. And wow, he's actually pooping out lots of creep. <coughs> Man, I'm just sorry about this. I'm just coughing a lot today. Looks like, yeah, Vikings will be coming out. Um, so that's actually a pretty interesting play. Um, or Ouroboros, being smart, putting down a spore crawler in his main. Now often get that expansion. Um, if anything, if he's this far behind and he wants to macro, he should be getting a third expansion um, and trying to out macro his opponent. Um, but in this case, if he's going to do something, he should attack soon. Um, just because his opponent right now is already on to base, um, mining that gas, which Terran needs so badly. Looks like um, Epimetheus is doing a good job keeping his energy low. Um, and we have a couple Vikings on the way, gonna be scouting that the first pair of rocks are down. Um, let's see, nothing too interesting going on here. He does have the plus one for his Zerglings, unfortunately he has Roaches out. Um, so I don't know how much that's going to be helping the Roaches. Looks like Epi is going to be scouting up here, maybe scouting if there's a base down here. <coughs> to his dismay, Epi's going to see that there are no drones mining here. So just a hatchery doing nothing um, as usual. But there is a queen that's going to be defending, and that queen is not very happy to see those Vikings. So he's going to shoo. She's going to shoo her away. So nice, nice, um, nice placement here with the spine crawlers in a straight line. Um, so each of them could be hitting whatever is going to come through these rocks. Kind of strange that he did this. Um, I think he expected uh, Epimetheus to break down these rocks and make some kind of counterattack, Just because um, he was scouted by those Vikings and it looks like I am experiencing some lag. Oh, that is terrible. Looks like that overlord is going to be picked off. Putting Epi not really under supply but kind of close. He would he'll probably be to his um, favor if he actually did build one more overlord. <coughs> okay, um, nice sensor tower placement just to see what's in the air. Uh, actually, a, probably a better placement for the sensor tower would have been right here, just so we could see what's going on here as well as right here. So I think if he put that sensor tower just a bit lower, he might have been able to see um, if enemies were actually crossing their bridge or not. Looks like now Ouroboros actually does have this uh, saturation started on his expansion. Take a quick look on the army tab here. Um, looks like Epimetheus is pulling a um, little bit of a head, but wow, Orbor was actually producing a lot of Zerglings. And that is my phone ringing right now. I'm just going to put that on ignore. I don't know if you guys can even hear that. Quiet. Yes, quiet you. Um, looks like Missile Attacks is now going up. So he has uh, level 1 upgrades for his Zerglings and Missile Attacks. Um, 
But you, generally, you want you want that armor upgrade with the missile attacks, um, or you have to choose one route. Either you're going for a melee melee upgrade, or you're going for a missile upgrade. And I feel like kind of Boros was in a little dismay. He didn't know what he wanted to go, so he just got upgrades for both. Which, granted, um, I think um, armor would have been pretty helpful, especially with this army getting ready to move out. Um, looks like a couple Menevex will be coming out. He does have a pretty big number of Vikings here. Um, and Boros here having a lot of roaches. <coughs> looks like slowly Boros will be closing that gap. As you can see the Zerg macro kicking in there. Able to produce units so quickly. I love it. And Roach Speed will be coming up as well. Um, looks like he is getting that gas. That fourth gas as well. Yeah, that fourth gas. Sorry. I can't count. Good thing I can count. Hopefully I can count. Um, these rocks are halfway down, but Boros is going to be see this with he's going to be able to see this with this creep tumor, and this push is going to be moving out. This could do a lot of damage, especially if he sieges early. So that is very smart play on Epi's part, sieging right back here, scouting what he is, and he's going to bait his opponent into the siege tanks. And those siege tanks are going to do a lot of damage if Boros doesn't be careful. Oh, sorry, I burped. <laughs> and he's actually going to lose all his zerglings here. Um, so this did quite a bit of damage. Oh, but. <laughs> I'm not sure if I agree with this, but that was kind of a retreat stim. He should stim and pull forward, so um, losing um, losing a bit um, bit of micro there, or not micro, what am I saying? He actually shouldn't have stimmed um, to run away, but he should have stimmed to attack forward, so maybe he wasn't microing his army um, is what I'm trying to get at. So he has a nice little contain here. He's going to be doing, um, looks like some scouting, maybe some harass. Oh wow, actually there's no units here, so he could land these vikings and do a lot of damage to these um, drones. I, I have no idea why he is getting spore crawlers. Um, don't really know the reason behind that, but it looks like a couple drones will be will be picked off. The army tab now is a little bit um, little bit even uh, coming a little bit becoming more even. Wow. Can't talk. I'm a little a little flustered right now. But it looks like um wow Ouroboros is able to macro macro his army back up um, just as fast. It looks like a hydralis den is now coming up and Boros realizing that, wow, there are a big number of marines and what I need for those marines are banelings. It's like another attack coming in. He's moving in at the perfect time, right when the siege, right when the tanks weren't sieged. Um, unfortunately though, that is a lot of siege tanks. I think there are about four or five there. <coughs> and a lot of marines. So at this point, I don't think there's much Boros can do. Um, I think Mutas would have been a good choice instead of Hydras, um, especially against Terran. Against Terran, Mutas and banelings are probably the best build, the most standard build to go, the safest build to go. Um, but I mean, like Hydra, Hydralisks, they do work, but they're so weak, they have 80 health, so, you know, a couple a couple shells from the Siege Tank will easily take care of that, um, as well as Marines shredding them up. <laughs> it looks like, in desperation, Boros is going to be putting down a ton of spine crawlers. But Epi here is going to be coming in, um, going to be cleaning up these Hydras, no problem, look how quickly they died. They do a lot of damage, but they need those roaches in the front to be taking the tanking, not taking, but tanking. Well, taking as well, but tanking the damage. Um, so those hydras can be getting those shots. So it looks like Bros is going to be GGing, um, just because I think the unit choice wasn't the best. Um, if he, it, let's just think here. If he did get mutalisks, he would have been able to pick off those siege tanks. Granted, there were Vikings out, so yeah, at this high level, it's kind of hard to say. Um, what units he should have had out. Definitely should have, should have had a lot of banelings out um, for these marines. He could have done a lot of damage to those marines. Um, but if he did have Mutos out, he could have been picking off these siege tanks, um, especially towards the beginning. And maybe if he had a couple more queens out, he could have dealt with those vikings, especially in this area, because um, he did lose a couple of drones to those vikings. So, it's kind of hard to say. If, you ha if he did have a big critical number of Mutalisks, there wouldn't really have been much he could have done with only one starport. So he didn't have too many Vikings out. So yeah, um, just by looking at this game, I think Mutalisks would have been a better choice than his Hydralisks. Um, his Hydra Roach combination that he had going on there. Um, unfortunately, he did get that Hydralisk then a little too late, um, especially when this push was starting. So yeah, this was a fun game. Thank you for sending it to me. Um, I think it was you, Epimetheus, you sent this game to me. I'm assuming that because you won, but <laughs> anyways, um, yeah, this was a fun game to cast. Um, remember that you can send your replays to me um, to to my Gmail account. It's actually on the left side of my um, 
of my channel. So t check that out. Send me replays. I'm going to try to cast um, high level games more than lower level games, but occasionally I will cast lower level games just because we can do a little analyzing and learning um, and, s and just getting better at this game in general. So thank you guys. This is going to be Hop Starcraft, and I am going to be hopping out of here. Peace.